more no money, not for anybody. Welcome your whole set of pensions. Do they have no idea? So let's see how they do on this morning with Bridge. And I'm the man. Who's the man? I'm the man. Who's the man? I'm. No, wait man. a moment. Be quiet. Who's wait, listen, I'm listen. Man. Are you the man? Yes, I'm the man. No, listen. Are you the man? I'm one of the men. <laughs> one of the men. One of the male human beings. Good. You always spoil everything I do. And coming up later in the show. At 12.15, we'll be previewing another one of Channel 5's quality pieces of original programming through the keyhole, in which a hidden camera is pointed through the keyhole of a woman's changing room. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and at 12.25, we'll be visiting some of these Star Wars fans who've been camped out on Hollywood Boulevard for the last two months and tattooing their faces with the phrase... I have lost touch with reality. <laughs> kill me now, kill me. At 12.30, we'll be looking at the pictures that prove the rumours that Debbie McGee once scooped so low as to be intimate with Paul Daniels. <laughs> and at 12.45, we'll be meeting Britain's angriest shepherd. Doesn't, doesn't look very angry. He's Steve. calm now, but there's a raging beast which dwells within him. <laughs> and will you please welcome at the piano pianist Richard Thomas. <laughs> Oi, have you been listening to Marilyn Manson records again? No, no. He influences you, he no, does. No, he doesn't. Oh, I can see blood. That's okay. blood everywhere. Stop listening. Anyway, um, coming up on the show today is... No, mm, that's delicious. Mm. Well, what are you doing? Is it not obvious, Duke? No. I'm enjoying some lovely crest. It's a tasty and filling snack. Why don't you try some? Well, two points, Rich. A, because I'm doing the show and it's a bit distracting. And B, because it's crest. <laughs> you know, Stu... I used to be a bit like you. Patronising. <laughs> Someone offered me cress, I looked at them as if they were nutty. <laughs> but then I tried some cress, and you know, it refreshes the parts other cruciferous plants cannot reach. <laughs> cress. It's the taste of a new generation. What are, you, what are you doing? Why are you talking like you're in an advert or something? What's going on? <laughs> Don't be stupid, Stu. <laughs> what are you doing? That would be against the BBC Charter. I just like cress, that's all. <coughs> and at 29 pence a punnet... <laughs> Crest isn't a stress on my pocket it's either. Crest, crest, lovely, lovely crest, 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 you're sincerely Ian Cress. Ian <laughs> His dad invented Cress, too. That's why it's called Cress. Rich, how, how can you do an advert? It's, it's a letdown to anyone who respects our unique brand of faux naive scatology and smug, self-satisfied intellectualism. Stu, I really like Cress. I'm not prejudiced. All kinds of Cress. Water Cress, Upland Cress, Hoary Cress. Of course, it's all Hoary Cress by the time I see it. It's lovely, Stu, isn't it? Cress, Cress, lovely, lovely Cress. Mm. Shut up now, stop. Just mm, go on, Rich, eat it. Mm. It's just Cress, Stu. Cress, the Cress, the Cress mm. marketing board, Rich. The Crest Marketing Board might sound like an innocuous organisation, but it's probably owned by a massive evil multinational company. It isn't. It's owned by Ian Crest, who is very nice. He collects thimbles. No, no, look at the small print on here, right? The Crest Marketing Board is a subsidiary of the International Society for Killing Poor Children. <laughs> it says yeah, still? Still what? Crest! Crest! A Jew said to me, I must not work or feast upon the Sabbath day, or I shall be consigned to hell's depths. That is very true, my Semite friend, I replied. And that Saturday he did nor labor nor eat. Of course, what he had not realized in his unchristian foolishness was that the Sabbath is on a Sunday. Well, I wasn't going to tell him. 
Cress. Have you forgotten how good it tastes? <laughs> no, I haven't. Stop eating Cress. Do the show All properly. All right, what have you been up to this week? Now? Well, this week, I stopped in my red Mini with a white roof, which I drive, at a petrol station. And while I was inside, a man and a woman pulled up behind my car in an identical red Mini with a white roof. And they started pointing at it and waving and going, oh, look, it's the same, ah! Like we're in the red Mini club or something. <laughs> so I walked over to them, wound down the window, and I said to the woman driving, you do realise these are mass-produced, don't you? <laughs> in a factory. It's not that surprising that you should see one the same. In fact, I'd go further and say, it's inevitable. <laughs> if your husband had the same face as me, that might be worth commenting on, right? <laughs> then I looked across at him and I saw he did have the same face as me. That's what they've been pointing out all along. Yeah. <laughs> he was married to Tucker Jenkins, yeah, didn't he? Sure. Yeah. So, Rich, what have you been up to this week? Well, this week, Stu, I have been mainly eating Chris. Don't <laughs> stop <laughs> Crest! Free crest for everyone! Come on! Free crest! Eat the crest! Come on! Eat it! Eat the crest! Eat it! Eat it! Look at his little face, Stu! It's almost going to be on the Eat the crest! Please, stop it! Crest! Eat the crest, Stu! Stop it! Look at his little face, Stu! Stop it! Stop it! Crest is good! If all the world's agriculture and meat farms were turned over to crest, We'd be able to feed the world ten times over, Stu. With Cress? Yeah. Which is of no nutritional value. Still? Still? Well, it's not enough just to say still all the time, Rich. Still? Saying still in a high voice doesn't make it any more true. Still? Saying still in a low voice doesn't make it any more true. Still, Mary Poppins. <laughs> Saying still in a Dick Van Dyke accent doesn't make it any more true. No, no. Hello, it is I, Simon Quinn, like the headmaster of all hobbies and the chief dinner lady of most pastimes, here with another hobby, which is a hobby which you may like to do as a hobby. What you will need for this week's hobby. A computer with internet access. A second floor window. A flask of weak lemon drink. <laughs> and... A nerd. Ah, look at him, he's a nerd. I'm doing the shopping for my mum. <laughs> my nerd is Alan Cecil. Hello. Alan Cecil likes train-spotting and surfing the web. <laughs> he makes even Neil Petark look with it. <laughs> this hobby is a good hobby for people who, like me, believe that hobbies are real and tangible things which can be touched and tasted and felt and smelt and seen. It is also a good hobby for people who believe that anything that isn't tangible should be wiped off the face of the tangible planet Earth. This hobby is not called, as you would expect, the surfing the web hobby. Oh, no. Rather cleverly, I have been named it the Stuffing the Web Hobby. <laughs> do you see what I've done? How to do this week's hobby. First, get your nerd to let you join in on the web. Unfortunately, you must pretend to like the web. Helen says, well, I like the web. I think it is good. Can I join in on the web? But... Yes. Then drink your weak lemon drink. Drink it quickly so as to wash away the foul taste of computer lies in your honest hobby gullet. <laughs> Alan Cecil, do you like the web? Answer me! Yes, it's brilliant. You can find out all sorts of information about hobbies, and even chat with other people who like hobbies, and exchange ideas and things. Oh, how nice. Plus, there's loads of stuff about sex on it. Oh, how interesting. Not! Alan Cecil, hobbies are real. They do not exist in some false, pixelated, metaphysical computer plane. They are in the real world of the real living realm. They do not exist in evil and dead machines that have never even felt the joy of hobby in their hand. I know, but the internet can help you meet other... The big cut! The web is against everything I believe in. It is the nemesis of hobby, and I shall not rest until it is destroyed! <laughs> 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 That is four computers destroyed by me now, only a few hundred million more to go, and then I have won my war against the web. You can help me in this hobby by destroying any computers you may see, especially those with internet access, but do not think you will ever be better than me at the stuffing the web hobby, for I am the permanent milk monitor of all hobbies, and ever more shall be so. I shall not be usurped. Bye. Oh, 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 look at us, look, look at it. Our oh. sofas are the same, Stu. Your sofa's identical to mine. We're yeah. in the sofa gang, Stu. Yeah, Rich, you, re hey. look, you realise these sofas are commercially produced in a factory, right? And also, they've been chosen by the set designer to be the same. I know, it's amazing, isn't it? No, it sofa isn't man, sofa yeah, shut up sofa, now, leave it, leave it, sofa. Leave, leave it, leave it. Anyway, you see the papers this week, Stu? Old Pamela Anderson with her old breasts and everything yeah. appeared at the awards ceremony wearing nothing but soap suds. Yeah, now, to me, that seems unnecessarily coy of her. 
given that it takes anyone with a computer 10 seconds to download actual camcooter footage of her and Tommy Lee performing an act that is illegal in many US states. <laughs> Were they smuggling fresh fruit across borderline, Stu? No, no. I'd like to sing that, you nice. No, uh, <laughs> there may have been life. fruit Ooh. involved, but I'm not sure. It's a strange week, though, isn't it, where Pamela Anderson, an ex-porn star, appears in public covered up, right? Whereas Gail Porter, an ex-children's TV presenter, <laughs> appears fully frontally nude everywhere, all the time, everywhere. <laughs> all right, Stu, leave it, Grandad. Okay. This isn't 1989 right. anymore, Grandpapa. All right. <laughs> the world has changed, my friend. Yeah. Nowadays, female empowerment isn't about picketing news agents that sell Mayfest. You all know, my friend. Right. It's about <laughs> stripping off jackass naked. And any woman who doesn't do that is betraying the feminist struggle. Yeah. It's terrible how things have changed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's terrible, yeah. yeah. You know, every time you think you know the rules of engagement, women just change them. Yeah, that's what they like, Stu. Flighty. Yeah, flighty. anyway. Now, this week's aims of things we plan to achieve in the next seven days. Aim one is to try and teach Jerry Halliwell the difference between a Shih Tzu and a Shiatsu by massaging her with a small, vicious dog. <laughs> Aim two is to mark Scottish independence by giving the Scottish people their own new king, Mohammed Al Fayed. <laughs> Aim three is to give Robbie Williams a tattoo of Richard Herring. <laughs> Aim four is to punish Gail Porter for her exhibitionism by making her do a six hour photo shoot at the South Pole wearing nothing except one yellow plimsoll. <laughs> and Aim five, yeah, showed her. That small Scottish woman. <laughs> Aim five is to finally solve the problem of unemployment in this country by encouraging out-of-work people to grow cress <laughs> in the moist cleft of their buttocks. <laughs> cress which they can then feed their family with and have enough left over to sell. What, at, at, 20, <laughs> at 29p a punnet? Exactly, Stu. It's good, isn't it? Cress. <laughs> down this morning at the DHSS. Because, <laughs> of course, obviously, I do declare all my income. <laughs> well, 1979 was an amazing oh, yeah. time for comedy. Exactly. I remember I had a bit more hair back then. But uh, I, I remember one night I'd made a particularly tasteless remark about uh, Airy Neve, who had been killed by the IRA that day. Um, we're, all, we're all glad about something, aren't we? Another thing I was, uh, I was glad about, I was glad to see that uh, Tory MP Airy Neve was assassinated, uh, blown up and killed by the INLA. <laughs> and um, it wasn't a great joke, it was just of the moment. And the, the audience were very, was like, oh, don't go there. You know, it was very, uh, very tense. <laughs> what about old uh, Jeremy Beadle, anyway, with his <laughs> <laughs> Uh, was probably the first British comic to broadly come out in support of killing old men. Um, <laughs> that's my, my thing. Actually, after, after the act, I was actually invited to Ireland to, to join the IRA uh, and take part in, in mortar attacks uh, and so on. But I couldn't go because I, I had some voiceovers to do for Building Society adverts. <laughs> I feel like Cress tonight. Cress yeah, tonight. You feel like Cress tonight? Yeah, I'm going to have some tonight right. to go home. Isn't there a dance to go with that? Um, <laughs> yes. No, there isn't. It doesn't work because unlike chickens, there's no set of movements associated with Cress. <laughs> oh, my poor fool. Oh, no. But there is, Stu. What? This is the movement associated with Cress, Stu. Look. <laughs> I like Chris, enough, you Chris. I like it. Okay, enough Chris. It's so versatile. You can have it in a sandwich, yeah. you can have it on its own. Anything else? No. <laughs> Some there. <laughs> anyway. No, no, you can have it in a salad. No, enough, right, enough. Come Chris. on, hit it, Rick. Enough, Chris. Stop. Enough, enough, enough. 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 Now, anyway, now it is time to meet the king queen, of the show. Or another show. For this week. Or next week. So to help us. Or you. Or you. Or us. Please welcome our two slaves. Or nine slaves. Trevor and Natalie. Or Natalie and Trevor. Trevor and Natalie. They're dressed as pieces of dress. They're dressed as pieces of dress. 
just a coincidence, Stu. There were some old Crest costumes lying around on the backstage. <laughs> Trev tried one and he got the zipper stuck. Looks like something off Doctor Who. <laughs> the plant king and queen. <laughs> Our people are dead. Doctor, help us. We are the last of their kind. <laughs> Trevor, of course, there. Our small face man. You know, Trevor, your face is so small that there are actual pieces of cress which have a greater surface area than your face. There aren't. However small my face is, it's clearly bigger than a cress leaf. No, look, it isn't. Look. <laughs> Damn your eyes, Lee. Ah. Anyway, as king of the show, you'll get whatever you desire from this. On the queen of the show, the Eat More Cress Trolley. What? Cress, lovely, lovely cress. Cress, cress, lovely, lovely cress. Shut up! We'll stick with it right. until you get it. Cress, Stu, lovely cress. But as Jesus said, man cannot live by cress alone. Because it is of no nutritional value. <laughs> he also said, consider the cress as well, of course. Hit it! Two, three, four! Cress, cress, lovely, lovely cress. cress. I love cress. Cress, cress, lovely, lovely cress. Oh, I love cress. Cress, lovely, lovely cress. Hi there. You just caught me milking aphids like an ant would. Uh, don't worry, the aphids like being milked. If you look at their little faces, it's almost as if they understand. <laughs> but today I'm tasting an even rarer milk. It's the milk of human kindness. <laughs> Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, look. The milk of human kindness. But look at it. Look at it, look. Look, there's hardly any left. Still, that's not going to stop me. I can't wait. Um, oh, oh, no. Well, there's no use crying over spilt milk. You've got to lap it up before it all escapes. Mm. Oh, oh, sweet milk. Ten out of ten. Mm. There'll always be milk. Not always this one, though. Mm. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Last week we asked you if you were our tallest viewer, and here are the three tallest people who wrote in. Hello there. Um, Hello, Dom. Hello, what's your name? My name's Vod Clarkson. You're very tall. How tall are you? Six foot nine and a half. Six foot nine and a half, that half inch, so important. <laughs> and uh, what's your name? My name's Greg Clarkson. Well, what then? Is it some kind of mirror? <laughs> and uh, how tall are you? I'm also six foot nine and a half. That's a crazy coincidence. It's like something out of the X Files. And what's your name? My name's Randy Rumble. Okay, Bryony Rumble. Yes. Let's get ready to rumble. Uh, and uh, and how tall are you? I'm five foot two. Mm, okay. But who is the tallest? <laughs> well, that's for our studio audience to democratically decide with the aid of our Angus Deaton powered Cressometer. <laughs> so if you think that Rod Clarkson is the tallest, applaud now. Someone. Angus Deaton, excuse me, Brian Deaton. You've got 20,000 pounds in a minute there. You think that Greg Clarkson, person two, is the tallest, applaud now. <laughs> Everything. Bryony Rumble is the tallest. Applaud now. Pronouncements, the one king of today. Yes, yeah, so I would like to see the Millennium Dome to be um, transformed into a shrine for people with small faces. The king or queen. has spoken. Oh, <laughs>
in the lettuce, that's product placement. Did you have something to do with that? No, Stu, those lettuce leaves can't be bought. Believe me, I tried. Oh, you're sick. <laughs> look, Stu, look at us, the two of us. We've both got two yeah, legs, right, Stu, okay. look. We're in the two-leg gang. Yeah. Lego, yeah, right. legisto, now, leg um, man. According, leg. To, according to Friday's Sun, Catherine Zeta-Jones has been seen out in Hollywood on the arm of Star Wars creator George Lucas. On his arm? That's what it says. <laughs> what, like Rod Hull and Emu? Yeah, similar, yeah. <laughs> now, what Lucas' sudden success with women proves is that you've only got to be just a little bit famous and suddenly people find you attractive. Mm. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule, though, aren't there? <laughs> huh? Huh? I think that... Uh, George Lucas should be allowed to go out on three hot dates with Catherine Zeta-Jones in a row and then made to wait 20 years for the next one. <laughs> anyway, welcome him back now for his second glorious week. It's the Curious Alien. No! does not work, Stu. Stick with what you know. I hate new things. You said that, Rich, when they bought in the new schmoo. But now look at you. <laughs> schmoo all over the dish rags. It's not as good as the Curious Orange Stu. We want him back, don't we? Yeah! That is good. It's good. It's good. Anyway, the Curious Alien. What have you been curious about this... Huh? Uh? He's gone, Stu. Where is he? I vow he's off making some mischief somewhere. There he is, Stu. Oh, no, look. He's my press. This is... Oh, this is terrible. No! He's been eating my press! My get off my press! Ugh, my beautiful press! Leave Rich, my press! leave no! it, leave it. That alien will be out of control now that it's, um, it's eaten that cress. It's a well-known fact that cress sends aliens into a frenzy. It isn't. It does. It's the same effect catnip has on cats or a single pint of Guinness has on Tara Palmer Tompkinson. No, no look, my press is ruined! <laughs> Curse you, God, for making me this way! <laughs> I want to know where he is. Where's my orangey boy? I wonder what he's doing right now. 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 Woo! Come on, get out of bed. Put on your hat. And as of day, he's doing turn on TV. He's time to time. Everything in the I'm curious to land. I'm curious to land. Hey, you. You fancy a swig, eh? Oh, it's good stuff. It's nine percent. Ah, oh, what's the matter? My boo's not good enough for you, eh? I used to be on a telly. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering if you could satisfy my curiosity. <laughs> oh, curse you, God, for making me this way! We've both got an awareness of our own existence as a result of our ability to reason. We think, therefore we are. We can both be in the we assume we exist oh, gang. Come on. Sake. Exist. Oh, now come stop, on. Now, stop. Exist. Enough come of on. that. Enough. Enough. Anyway, enough. do some cress. Mm. Oh. Yes. Yeah, say yes to cress. Right. <laughs> cress is the snack I can eat between meals without ruining my appetite. Yeah, because it is of no nutritional value. Exactly, Stu. I can't believe that this was me. <laughs> Let's have some crests. Okay, crest. stop going on about crests, crest. right? It wouldn't matter if crest was the most wonderful food stuff in the world. It is. It, advertising is wrong. It's like the late great comedian Bill Hicks said. If you do a commercial, you're off the artistic roll call forever. And every word that comes out of your mouth is now like a turd falling into my drink. <laughs> Bill Hicks had eaten a bit more cress, he'd still be alive today. Rich, too. A comedian can't go on stage with a punnet of cress and expect the audience to show him respect. I am. Exactly. <laughs> Look, by me advertising cress, you, I can help save thousands of jobs in the cress industry. That's right. The cress. Yes. Industry. What Lee Hurst has done for Andrex toilet paper, and Alan Davis has done for whatever that thing he advertises yeah. is, and what Jack D did for Penguin biscuits, and what Angus Deaton has done for anyone who's prepared to pay him enough money. Yes. I will do for Crest. Well, advertising is wrong, and here's why. Lazy advertising slugs, lazy advertising slugs, stealing ideas and taking drugs. Lazy whoring advertising slugs, lazy whoring advertising slugs. 
Now, the advertising industry is legitimised theft. Here's a good example of that. Bonkers British artist Gillian Waring's photographic piece. Signs that say what you want to say, 92 to 93. People are using signs to reveal their innermost thoughts. Of course, uh, you all have seen a very similar thing uh, in a Volkswagen advert. She didn't get any money for that, though, which is awful. They're just level of disrespect for the advertiser. <laughs> now, advertisers' jobs involve nicking obscure ideas from the world of art, cinema and comedy, then making them into clichés before the public have had a chance to see them in context. And yet, people who work in advertising dare to call themselves creatives. Which is a bit like burglars breaking into your house, smashing all your stuff to bits, smearing their own mess on your walls, and then calling themselves <laughs> interior design consultants. Rich, what are you doing I'm there? I'm stealing ideas from the world of art to advertise Crestview. Well, Rich, too, can play at that game. One day, I looked up, and the table in my kitchen seemed to be a giant table, towering over me as if I were a miniature man. I'm Greg Evigan, Ross in TV's Lies Before Kisses. On the day in question, I had not been shrunk by a special ray, or magicked to be tiny. Oh no, I had simply fallen down onto the floor. If even I am not safe from the twin evils of gravity and God's neglect, then who among you can truly declare yourselves unafraid of what might happen when things fall over, spill, and get knocked out of cupboards? This week, pornographic magazines. It was school holidays, and um, I was at home with Carl, Mum's new boyfriend. And he was in the kitchen practicing his dancing. So I thought I'd go for a ride on my bike. I went out into the garage to get the bike and realised that there was a puncture in the um, tyre, so I had to look for the pump. Anyway, I found it up on the shelf. And I uh, pretty much put it down, and all the magazines and videos came with it. Anyway, Carl come in, kicking and screaming. And tell me that I better not tell my mum. Ah, just fell down, I was pulling the pump, it's coming. Yeah, I just fell down by itself, did it? Come on, get off! Don't touch your mother, are What? No. I never told him not to tell his mum. Oh, well, I don't know what he's playing at. Yeah. But to be honest, you know, I was hoping his dad was going to get cussed. <laughs> get Margaret, you know, she'd get all moody, then, you see? I'll we'll probably have to sling the hook. Yeah. Hosty little bleeder. Well, um, I'm in my stash in a shed now. My experience of lying on the floor looking up at my table was a living nightmare which still haunts my dreams. But I quickly used my hands and feet to stand up straight again, and all was well. But when pornography falls off a shelf under the head of a small boy, even the army of heaven must kneel. Join me, Greg Evigan, again next time, as things fall over, spill, and get knocked out of cupboards. I mean, make this. I'm Robbie Williams. I am him. And I love Crest. Rich, stop mm -hmm. doing that. Stop advertising Crest. I'm not doing a blinking thing, Stu. It's my tattoo of Robbie Williams. Mmm, Crest, yeah. And if he wants to advertise Crest, then that's up to him. I can't tell him what to do. Crest, Crest, lovely, lovely Crest. Shut up! <laughs> anyway, Rich, uh, you're not going to look in your shrine to the cause. My cause shrine, Stu, call it by his name. Let's have a... What? My shrine, my beautiful shrine! Who did this? Damn <laughs> oh, alien! Damn him to hell! Oh, darn! Look, he's ripped all the pictures to pieces! Yeah, and there's all this kind of alien goo left on it. Um... <laughs> Thank you.
For forty days have I been in the wilderness, and in that forty days have I eaten no food. And now that forty days is over, I am hungry. Well, there's a surprise. Satan, if thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. Tempt me not, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by the word of thy God. If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself off this high place, for it is written, His angels will bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot upon a stone. Tempt me not, Satan, for it is written again, Do not test the Lord thy God. I will give you dominion over all the kingdoms on this earth, Jesus, if thou wilt but fall before me and worship me. Tempt me not, Satan, for it is written again, again, Thou shalt worship no one but the Lord thy God. What about this, then? Mmm, look. Mm. A lemon cake. Mm, very <laughs> tempting, isn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no! Oh, I damn you to hell! How about this? A two meals for the price of one voucher at the Granary Restaurant of the Granada Service Station. Well, it's a tempting offer, exactly. Satan. Exactly. But the thing is, the food at the Granary Restaurants is so expensive, right, that you might as well just go and get two Burger King meals and eat them in the car park. Damn you to hell again! I don't think you'll be able to resist this. Gail Porter. <laughs> yes. Colonel Sanders' bargain bucket body can tempt no man. And put your cardigan back on now, Gail. They've chosen the new Big Breakfast presenter. Damn you to hell, Gail Porter! How about this? <laughs> a banana, Satan. It's not very tempting, is it? Well, I couldn't think of anything else. I want a loser here, aren't I? It's theologically necessary for you to overcome temptation because you represent man's triumph over sin and death. Yes, for it is written. Exactly. So, you know, there's no point in me being here. All I'm doing is actually just helping you achieve what you want. Yes. Do you not see? Ah. No, I do see. That's the whole point. And, you know, I, that's, I just explained it. Ah, to you. No, no. Ah. No, ah. No, I said ah first. You said ah louder. Well, I said it in a ah, in a higher voice. I can ah. say ah higher than you. Ah, ah. 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 I'm saying ah. it's so high only dogs and bats can hear. <laughs> ah, slow. Oh, I oh, look, there's no are. point going R, isn't Ah, it? so I've won. No, ah. because I am untemptable. We'll see about that. Let's see what you think of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Cress. Cress. Mm. <laughs> That's just too tempting. <laughs> Too tempting even for Jesus. I don't remember, I don't remember that. I don't remember doing that Cress advert. How did you make me do that? I brainwashed you, Stu. How? With my hip Cress machine. Oh, for God's sake. You get it's it? The weakest thing I've ever heard. It's my favourite joke. Right, I have okay, to keep say. moving. <laughs> Let's see, look at this. I can't believe that it's Cress, Stu. Well, <laughs> it is Cress. I still can't believe it. It's do you so think, good. do you think you could promote Cress better than Rich? It seems probable, but why not try? You can draw an advert, make up an advert, or even film an advert. The best one received in a week and a half by Wednesday the 19th of May will be king of show eight. I've got it, Stu. I've got the perfect slogan, Stu. Some Cress a day helps you work, rest and play. Does it help you work, rest and play? Does yes. No, listen to the question. Does <laughs> Cress help you work, rest and play? Yes, it does, Stu. You yeah. can't just lie about it, Rich. <laughs> what does it do? Well, some Cress a day helps you rest. And that's it. <laughs> it helps you rest because it's a very boring plant. Shut up. Rich, no. you, you've embarrassed me. <laughs> you've embarrassed the audience. You've embarrassed Nicola Walker from the last train. I haven't. <laughs> You have. He, he has embarrassed you, hasn't he? Yes. <laughs> now, we must find Ark. <laughs> most of all... Most of all... You... <laughs> you embarrassed yourself. Screw you! Ah. <laughs> <laughs>
take that to the head. See, it's a valuable weapon as well. Well, will I win the Guinness Book of World Record record for saying Cress more times than any other human being in a 45-minute TV show? I can't say Cress, but I know a man who can. It's Nostradamus on his horse, David Collins! <laughs> Have you, um, have you done something to your hair? No. Oh, it just, just looks nice, that's all. <laughs> um, anyway, first, uh, let's look at your three predictions from last week. Remember, two right, and you'll win this lovely barbecue. Oh, yeah. Natalie there, demonstrating one, of the may wedding ma mm, demonstrating one of the many ways that you can prepare crest. What will burn on a barbecue? Shut up, Stu. Oh. Do you like crest, Nostradamus? I like everything you like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nostradamus, last week you said that Reef would play the Royal Albert Hall on, on Tuesday at 7 p.m. PM. The news said... Correct, well done, first one right. Yeah. give him that. No, because that was advertised. It was advertised months in advance, wasn't it? It's was advertised. Yeah, but sometimes concerts get cancelled due to unforeseen circumstances. Yeah. Even a monkey knows that. That's <laughs> idea. Right, second, Nostradamus, you said that the United States yeah, of America yeah. would sink, sink into the sea. sea. The news said... <laughs> No, that didn't happen. Oh, dear. Did I get it wrong? Oh, you'll have to punish me. All right, then, Nostradamus. <laughs> That's a Chinese burn for you. No, I deserve more than that, Kate. I was seriously wrong. All right, then. <sighs> That's a nipple tweak for you, Nostradamus. Oh, I'm a delicious country betwixt pain and pleasure. <laughs> Let me hurt you, it. Make me burn my lesson. I've been wet, Kate. Nostradamus obviously deliberately got that wrong because he likes being punished and you like punishing Don't him. Don't be stupid, Stu. This hurts me more than it hurts Nostradamus. Just yes. a little bit more, it. Please. This whole section is turning into a travesty of the investigation of the art of prophecy. Shut up, right. Finally, uh, Nostradamus, you said uh, that Richard Herring... That's you. ...and yourself... That's me. ...would share a lingering kiss... kiss. ...and then go back to your place, place. for a sausage... ...sausage. ...from your lovely new barbecue. Uh, the news said... <laughs> no, that hasn't happened. But, Rich, there's still a few seconds of the week left. Who knows what might happen? Oh, Nostradamus, I've waited for this moment so long. Oh, no! It's David Collins! He's jealous! He knows what we're doing! He's wrong! No. Ah, that's not ah, kicking while he's down. Oh, Nostradamus, oh, you have not oh, missed Richard Herring, so oh, the barbecue oh, must be destroyed! Yeah. Oh. suppose you still need the fence, dear The fence is not on offer. So, Nostradamus, what are your predictions for the next fortnight? Well, prediction number one. The FA Cup will be won by United. Uh, oh, wait, wait, which United? Manchester or Newcastle United? Do not question the forces of darkness. <laughs> no, you're a very stupid man. Okay, right. <laughs> prediction number two. Eddie Izzard will finally appear in a good film. Say that. And prediction number three, David Collins will be put to sleep for meddling in things which he doesn't understand. <laughs> and can he come yeah. back in next week? Ah, no. ah, 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 Don't ah, make me choose between you and him. Ah, 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 ah. Nostradamus there ah, and his horse, David horse. Collins. Ah. from outer space, current plot, hilarious 1985 Griff Rhys Jones and Mel Smith vehicle, in which Griff Rhys Jones and Mel Smith play some morons from outer space, I expect. Extra final scene. Mel Smith and Griff Rhys Jones walk towards the camera, hand back their enormous fees, and apologise. Sorry. <laughs> who do you think is best? To, uh, who thinks best, Smith and Jones or Hale and Pace? I think uh, it's almost impossible to say. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, I think they should cut their losses, Stu. They both double up. Should cut their losses, yeah. and both the funny ones should get together, right? Smith, yeah, so Mel Smith, Smith, Stu, call him by his name. Yeah, right. He should leave Reese Jones yeah. and team up with the funny one in Hale and Pace. Which one is the funny one in Hale and Pace? Um, the one with the moustache. What Hale was that? No, it's Pace. It's Hale. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they should maximise their potential, and the BBC should make them do a new show called Alas Smith. And the moustache one from Hale and Pace. Yeah, it wouldn't work, Rich, that act, would it? Because all it would be is two overweight men talking a load of rubbish without a thin one to interrupt. <laughs> Move on, Stu. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm you, we've both got something it's not gonna similar. Work, no. it. I can't think of anything now, Stu. Now you've pointed out the essential worthlessness of our act. <laughs> I'm nearly 32 years old, Stu. I've got a felt tip drawing of Robbie Williams on my no, stomach. Sad. I keep getting attacked by an alien. Puppet of an alien. Don't spoil the magical illusion, Stu. But <laughs> it doesn't matter, Stu, because with my crest millions, I can give up comedy tomorrow. Which don't count your chickens. It's all signed and sealed in this contract, Stu. There's nothing that can go possibly go. Oh no, it's got my contract, Stu. Oh no, my contract. No, my contract. My beautiful contract. No, why? <laughs> The sun giveth us light, the moon enchanteth us, the meadows are for our play. All these sumptuous treasures number amongst the wonders of God. And of all these shining wonders, the most wondrous is Cress. <laughs> He's gone insane! Can no one stop him? Well, that's the end of the show. Don't forget, you can write to us at the address coming up now. We'll visit Dungeon King Foto Sedgebeer's website about us. We're not on next week because there's cricket on, although there's more comprehensive coverage of that tournament on Sky. Also on Sky, a new episodes of Seinfeld and The Simpsons at regular times when you might actually get to see them. So, why not sign Stu, up? who will now? rid me? <laughs> who will rid me of this turbulent alien, Stu? Who will rid me of? <laughs> Well, it's Rich, my... it's, your, it's your tattoo. It sounds like it's trying to tell us something. Oh, I'll save you. I'll save you, Rich. Music soothes the savage beast. Quickly, Robbie, sing. See you sing next time. Your heart. Goodbye. I'm lying in my bed. Thoughts running through my head. And I feel that love is dead. I'm loving angels instead. Take it, Robbie. And we're off the air. <coughs> Thank you, Herr Headings. You did an excellent job. Thanks very much, Ian Cress. But before I can give you your Cress money, there is one more thing I need no. to do for you. What are you talking about? Behind the sofa! Oh, get off! Get off! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. No, get Thank off! He's in my mouth hole! He's in my mouth hole! Oh, my gosh! Polo has to be intimate with Paul Daniels. <laughs> and at 12.45, we're meeting Britain's angriest shepherd. <laughs> doesn't, <laughs> doesn't look very angry, He's too. calm now, but there's a raging beast which dwells within him. <laughs> and will you please welcome at the piano pianist Richard Thomas. <laughs> Have you been listening to Marilyn Manson records again? No, no. He influences you, he no, does. No, he doesn't. Oh, yeah. I can see blood. There's okay. blood everywhere. Stop this. Anyway, um, coming up on the show today is... No, mm, that's delicious. Mm. Well, what are you doing? Is it not obvious, do no. you? I'm enjoying some lovely crest. It's a tasty and filling snack. Why don't you try some? Well, two points, Rich. A, because I'm doing the show and it's a bit distracting. And B, because it's crest. <laughs> you know, Stu... I used to be a bit like you. Patronising. <laughs> Someone offered me cress, I looked at them as if they were nutty. <laughs> but then I tried some cress, and you know, it refreshes the parts other cruciferous plants cannot reach. <laughs> cress. It's the taste of a new generation. What are, you, what are you doing? Why are you talking like you're in an advert or something? What's going on? <laughs> Don't be stupid, Stu. <laughs> what are you doing? That would be against the BBC Charter. I just like cress, that's all. And at 29 pence upon it. <laughs> 
Crass isn't a stress on my pocket either. Crass, Crass, lovely, lovely Crass, 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 lovely, lovely Crass. What's this? No, don't, oh, don't touch that. Oh, I wish I hadn't brought that. Crass, free Crass for everyone. Come on, free Crass. Eat the Crass, come on, eat it. Eat the Crass. Eat it. Look at his little face, Stu. It's almost going to be on the Eat the Crass. Crass, eat the Crass, Stu. Stop Look it. at his little face, Stu. Okay. You know Cress is good. If all the world's agriculture and meat farms were turned over to Cress, we'd be able to feed the world ten times over, Stu. With Cress? <laughs> yes. Which is of no nutritional value. Still? Still? Well, it's not enough just to say still all the time, Rich. Still! Saying still in a high voice doesn't make it any more true. Still! Saying still in a low voice doesn't make it any more true. Still, Mary Poppins! <laughs> Saying still in a Dick Van Dyke accent doesn't make it any more true. No, no. Hello, it is I, Simon Quinn, like the headmaster of all hobbies and the chief dinner lady of most pastimes, here with another hobby which is a hobby which you may like to do as a hobby. What you will need for this week's hobby. A computer with internet access. A second floor window. A flask of weak lemon drink. And... A nerd. Ah, oh, look at him. He's a nerd. I'm doing the shopping for my mum. Ah, oh, oh, oh. my nerd is Alan Cecil. Hello. Alan Cecil likes train spotting and surfing the web. He makes even Neil Petark look with it. Oh. This hobby is a good hobby for people who, like me, believe that hobbies are real and tangible things which can be touched and tasted and felt and smelt and seen. It is also a good hobby for people who believe that anything that isn't tangible should be wiped off the face. A Jew said to me, I must not work or feast upon the Sabbath day or I shall be consigned to hell's depths. That is very true, my seamite friend, I replied. And that Saturday, he did nor labor nor eat. Of course, what he had not realized in his unchristian foolishness was that the Sabbath is on a Sunday. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to tell him. Mm. Chris, have you forgotten how good it tastes? <laughs> no, I haven't. Stop eating, Chris. Do the show All properly. All right, what have you been up to this week? Oh. Well, this week, I stopped in my red mini with a white roof, which I drive, at a petrol station. And while I was inside, a man and a woman pulled up behind my car in an identical red mini with a white roof. And they started pointing at it and waving and going, oh, look, it's the same, ah! Like we're in the red mini club or something. <laughs> so I walked over to them, wound down the window, and I said to the woman driving, you do realise these are mass-produced, don't you? <laughs> in a factory. It's not that surprising that you should see one the same. In fact, I'd go further and say, it's inevitable. <laughs> if your husband had the same face as me, that might be worth commenting on, right? <laughs> then I looked across at him and I saw he did have the same face as me. That's what they've been pointing out all along, basically. Yeah. He was married to Tucker Jenkins, yeah, didn't he, sure. Steve? So, Rich, what have you been up to this week? Well, this week, Stu, I have been mainly eating Cress. Don't <laughs> put that on. Oh. A letter from the Cress Marketing Board. <laughs> Dear Mr Herring, we are delighted that you have agreed to become the new face of Cress <laughs> and look forward to a successful campaign advertising Cress with you doing it and saying Cress is good and stuff. <laughs> Yours sincerely, Ian Cress. Ian <laughs> His dad invented Crest, Stu. That's why it's called Crest. Rich, how, how can you do an advert? It's, it's a letdown to anyone who respects our unique brand of faux naive scatology and smug, self-satisfied intellectualism. Stu, I really like Crest. I'm not prejudiced. All kinds of Crest. Water Crest, Upland Crest, Hoary Crest. Of course, it's all Hoary Crest. Oh, it's, 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 it's lovely, Stu, isn't it? Crest, Crest, lovely, lovely Crest. Shut up now, stop. Just... Mm, go on, Rich, eat it. Mm. It's just Cress, Stu. The, the, the Cress, the Cress mm. Marketing Board, Rich. The Cress Marketing Board might sound like an innocuous organisation, but it's probably owned by a massive evil multinational company. Isn't it? It's owned by Ian Cress, Stu. He's really nice. He collects thimbles. No, no, look at the small print on here, right? The Cress Marketing Board is a subsidiary of the International Society for Killing Poor Children. <laughs> it says yeah, still? Still what?
Stuart Lee. And I'm the man. Who's the man? I'm the man. Who's the man? I'm the man. Now wait a moment, be quiet. Who's wait, listen, I'm listen. Are you the man? Yes, I'm the man. Now listen. Are you the man? I'm one of the men. <laughs> one of the men? One of the male human beings. Good. You always spoil everything I do. And coming up later in the show. At 12.15, we'll be previewing another one of Channel 5's quality pieces of original programming, Through the Keyhole, in which a hidden camera is pointed through the keyhole of a woman's changing room. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> and at 12.25, we'll be visiting some of these Star Wars fans who've been camped out on Hollywood Boulevard for the last two months and tattooing their faces with the phrase... I have lost touch with reality. <laughs> kill me now, kill me. At 12.30, we'll be looking at the pictures that prove the rumours that Debbie McGee once scooped so 